That means, that means we are assuming that the surface is locally reacting. Locally reacting surface. In other words, when I push the surface, the behavior of the surface is totally depends on what he experienced locally. Okay, for example, when you have this, well, when you push this, this would bend, right? So, even though I push here, the position over here is affected by what is pushing over here. But locally reacting means that if I push here, only particle velocity or pressure on this surface, on this point, would be affected by this excitation. Okay, that is locally reacting. That is the concept of locally reacting. And that means we are assuming that surface of discontinuity is locally reacting. That is another important concept. Okay, when I, when I shout over here, if it is not locally reacting, then this will vibrate. Even though I shout, I, I put the point and excitation, this will sh behave like this. But if it is locally react, how does this flat surface of discontinuity will be? It has to oscillate like this. Okay? That's a very strong assumption, but very practical, because if we, what we are considering, the wavelengths what, that we are considering is much larger than the typical size of irregularities. Okay? So another emphasis I made concerning the relative scale that has to be properly understood in acoustics. I mean, in acoustic the scale, the geometric scale has to be scaled by wavelengths. One centimeter and one, one millimeter, one kilometer and one meter does not have any physical meaning at all unless it is compared with the wavelengths. Okay? So, I hope you guys agree that even though this is very idealized, simple example, but certainly can be applied to the practical case too. Okay. Now, this is what we learn. So I can argue that the typical measure that represents how much transmitted and reflected is this reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient. And that is totally dominated by only characteristic impedance. Okay, what the rest of things we have to do? We have to do explore what does it really mean, right? By looking at some extreme behavior, as I wrote in my text, can fish hear sound when fishes have rock concerts? Can fishermen hear? Or when fishermen has big fight between each other? and the fish can hear.
When fish has a rock concert, that means I am sending signal from very high impedance medium to low impedance medium. So that case, Z1 is much, much smaller than Z0. That in that case, the transmission coefficient is what? And Z1 is much, much smaller than Z0. Then transmission coefficient is 0, right? Then means the fisherman, fish, fish's rock horns cannot be heard by the fisherman. Or when fisherman fighting, that means Z1 is very large compared to the Z0. That means transmitted where PT is two times bigger than P1. That means don't fight when you, when you try to catch a fish because a fish can hear. Do you think that is true? Impossible, right? Any, any, peop, any, any student has experience to catch a fish in a, in a pond, for example, when they whisper each other, then the fish will go away. Eh? So therefore, you always prohibited to talk at the pond to catch a fish. I don't think so. But this result certainly show that the fish can hear the sounds twice louder than what actually fishermen talked. That is not true because louder, listening louder means bigger power transmission coefficient, not simply amplitude transmission coefficient. Okay? To calculate the power, we need to calculate velocity, right? So what is ut over ui? ut is transmitted velocity's magnitude, and ui is instance wave's velocity. What is this? And we know that the impedance is p over u for plane wave case, right? So we can let pt is equal to Z1 U and PI is equal to Z0 U I U T. Therefore, what I have is I put this one over there that is Z1 over U T and Z0 over U I and that is equal to Z1 over Z1 plus Z0. Therefore, I divide this one, Z1, and multiply Z0. That gives me 2Z0 over Z1 plus Z0. Therefore, the power transmission coefficient is what? Is the power or intense power per unit area or intensity is one half uh, P multiply you conjugate, right? Okay. And in this case, the characteristic impedance has all as a real part only. Therefore, the power transmission coefficient is simply this one multiply that one. Then what I have is the power transmission coefficient is 4 Z0 Z1 over Z1 plus Z0 square. So now, when fish has a rock concert, the fisherman can hear? No, oh, because power transmission coefficient is 0. When, fi when fishermen fight each other, the, the, the the fish can hear? No, because the power transmission coefficient is true. Okay?